The waiting is over. The New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions. And this one will last a lifetime. And that is 25 years ago tomorrow. Yeah. Doesn't it feel like yesterday? In a lot of ways it does. Uh, I can't believe it coming into this season, you know, going to the first Ranger game, they're saying, well, what about the, uh, what are you going to do for the reunion? 25, I said, the reunion? 25, <laughs> man. Crazy how quick that went. It is amazing. Now, I'm supposed to introduce you, but everybody watching here, of course, yeah. knows who you are. It's Mike Richter, obviously. And uh, there's plenty to talk about those memories. Sure. But game seven last night, Stanley Cup Finals. What you saw from Jordan Bennington yeah. in the first five minutes, ten minutes of that game, from your eyes as one of the great goaltenders of all time, what did you see there? Well, I think the number one thing that all these teams have to show by the time you get to the finals is resiliency. And you have to have that in your goaltender. You're going to lose games. You're going to miss pucks. Um, you know, you, 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 you may get embarrassed here and there. You have to scrape it off and keep going. And... His record and the Blues' record um, coming in after a loss was spectacular. So, right, you're going to let one goal in, but you don't let two. two. Yeah. 178 goals against, 936 save percentage, as you just said, after a loss. And Incredible for him. Yeah, a so it's, it's, the kind of question is, it was answered. He can play at a high level, but can he do it consistently? Mm -hmm. And can he do it with adversity? And the answer is obviously, uh, absolutely, but... It just became more and more apparent this kid was unflappable as, as he went down there. And, you know, getting those great games is very, very important. But, you know, he lost the last game. What's he going to do? It's game seven. Is he going to be – comes right out. He's the best player on the ice. So, um, yeah, he was he was remarkable. And, and Tuka Rask was too. It just it, – it didn't work out for him. And, and it's game six early. Rask was amazing. So it does Absolutely show you – great. You know, it's the one sport. We talked about this uh, in the show at the beginning. Home ice seems like – goaltending greater than home ice. Is that – I would that, expect, right? yeah. In yeah. any other sport, home sure. court, home field, it matters. You have the crowd. Home ice seems like it's not nearly as important as if you just have a goalie that can shut the other team I'd down. rather have my goalie playing the way Jordan was away than having it average at home because he is that good and can change the complexion of the game. Don't forget, he starts getting to feel pretty good as he makes a couple of those big saves. His team starts to feel pretty good going, wow, we haven't played our best yet. And we're getting yeah. outplayed, and it's even. Right. So they start saying, let's pick it up, and they get a little bit more confidence knowing that they can rush the puck or take chances if they need to, and he's going to be back there. And conversely, you see the other teams sometimes start changing their behavior and going, well, okay, now I've got a point-blank shot. You see against Henrik Lundqvist, you see against the great players, Dominic has to happen all the time. You get a point-blank shot, and you say, well, maybe I better make a perfect pass to get an open net back door, and you – give up a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it changes a lot of the it, it dynamics. certainly do yeah. tense up. You played in the game seven, so you understand this. How does it feel when you're control? like it's a game seven and you know you're the last line of defense. Now every game you are, but yep. this is game seven. How does that feel? I, I think it's so interesting and I was so excited to watch the game last night. Think about they've had this full season of ups and downs. They've had the entire playoffs. They've seen this team that they're playing now six times. Yeah. Uh, wins, losses, uh, rough games, great, you know, uh, skill plays. They know this other team well. The other team knows them well. They know themselves well. And just there's almost nothing left to do. Just go out there and play. And uh, to me it was – I absolutely loved it. The, all the talk, all the media, throw it away. You have to go out there and compete for 60 minutes or more, depending if you go into OT. And I uh, – I love, you know, both teams I thought played very well last night. Um, but you could kind of smell it at the end of that first period. If yeah. they were going to get one good chance and get a goal, it's going to change the whole feel of the game, and it did. Yeah, and one save can certainly do that. For and, sure. And speaking of how home ice and a hot goalie, yep. you remember in that series in 1994, sure. game four, sure. the penalty shot with Pavel <laughs> Bore. And, and we'll watch it right here. Here he comes. And you knew exactly what he was going to do there, didn't you? <laughs> well, interestingly... Or were you just in the Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> Pav scored a lot in that playoff series. Yes. I mean, he's a great player, breakaway speed. You know, it, it's very difficult to defend. You know it. You say it before the game. Watch him. He hangs. He's going to... He's still... He's going to get his chances. And he had scored... By shooting, he'd scored by deking. So you actually have to play him pretty honest. I can't say oh, he's got that, you know, forehand deke that he did in All-Star game or anything else. It's part of his repertoire, but there's other things he's got. 
So and if I start guessing, I'm in big, big trouble. And it worked out that way. I, I followed him well. Well, you mentioned the All-Star game, which was at Madison Square sure, Garden that sure, year. Yeah. And you actually did face him in that. It, yeah. it, is this identically, is this the same shot? It's damn, or the same attempt? I know damn, it's on a breakaway this yeah, time. Yeah, damn but. close. I mean, the, the, the key with this guy is he, with that speed, he's going to get himself free. And, yeah, he did the same thing there. Forehand deke had scored against Calgary in the uh, – um, last uh, round before us mm -hmm. doing the same thing. I mean, look, the guy was scoring at, at well, it seemed, uh, across that year and, and even into that um, series against us. So, you know, it, it, there's those moments that come up in series and in games that can change it in either direction. It's a momentum shift, and that was great. I got the better of him there, but, you know, he's, uh, he was a great player and scored plenty in that series. No question, but, but in that situation, too, you remember where, where you were in that series, in that game, it could have been a tied series. For sure. You know, but uh, you make that and I know, quickly on that, because I always am curious about this, the mentality of a goalie. When you make that save at that moment, are you like, gotcha? Or are you like, <laughs> wow? Or are you like... You can't gloat too much because then there's the next save. Uh, yeah. You can make uh, the best save of your life, but if you lose the next one, it's still a goal against. So, right. it, it, you know, the position does teach you, and you have to work on it, and that's where experience is good, and that's why it's so impressive to see, um, you know, these young goalies coming up. It teaches you to be moment to moment. It's a very difficult thing to do. I mean... Uh, Massive component of playing this game as a goaltender is just the mental strength. I tell the young goalies that I've, we were talking about coaching before, you know, your, your most important muscle is your brain. And, uh, True. you know, you can go out there with all the physical attributes you want, but if you don't have that thing locked in, uh, it's not going to work out too well in the end. And you can see the converse. Uh, Binnington, you know, he was so focused on that. Just from the opening face-off, he looked like he was, you know, his eyes were set in the ice. He was kind of in his own little place there. You know it when you're watching a tennis player or a quarterback or a goaltender. They're moment to moment. They have to give as much energy to that singular moment as they possibly can. And when it's over, there's nothing you can do about it. Win or lose, mm -hmm. good save or yeah. bad. Had I lost uh, you know, that duel with Pav on that one, scrape it off, get ready to, for the next shot. You have to do that. And yeah. That's really what I think the resiliency that we were talking about earlier with St. Louis and, and, and Jordan in particular. Um, he's able to forget what just happened. You win the best game of your life, well, there's tomorrow. You know, and, and, and that's not an easy task. Sometimes you do have that great game. So, oh, you're great, and you're reading the press about you. Well, the next game, it's still a nothing-nothing game, and, and they're not remembering that last game. You better stop remembering Momentum. Yourself. Go it's, and play. Momentum's almost game to game. And then in that series, you guys do take the commanding lead, come home with a chance to win the cup yep. and lose. So you had to play a game seven yep. as well. And, you know, you played great. Obviously, everybody had their roles. And then there's Mark Messier, <laughs> you know, and, and what he was able to do. And, and this goal here, once this goal goes in, you're down at the other end now. And you're seeing that just chopping at it. Did, when that goal goes in, did you finally think to yourself, we got this? I, I couldn't say we got I know this. it was white knuckle at the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that last face off. And, and we've been through it enough. And this team is so scrappy, they're not going to give you an inch. And, you know, even last night, Boston wasn't saying, hey, it's over. You've, we're down by four. They're going to yeah. keep coming. Yeah. Um, if you saw when Boston won in game six, it was a 3 nothing game. They made it 3-1. All of a sudden, it, it started getting a little bit tight. And they get momentum, you know, the, the team coming from behind. Um, you're in the seventh game. Nobody's going to give you an inch for free. So you don't let yourself go there. You just say, here it is. And I was watching um, both goalies last night. You know, you go to those last few minutes, and they're focused one shot at a time, one shot at a time. You know, the, the clock's going to run out by itself. You can't force it one way or another. Uh, for the team that has the lead, it seems to be going so slow. For the team who's behind, man, that sand's draining out of the hourglass way too quickly. Mm -hmm. So you just have to focus on your responsibility moment to moment. So you're coaching? Uh, yeah, I coached this year. It was yeah? really fun. I mean, is, that, is it difficult to coach? Like some players, former players, have a hard time coaching. It is in a sense that my experience is my experience, and you can't just say I, I had this do what experience I did? and do yeah. what I did. It's yeah. a different world. There's different uh, considerations for young athletes now, and uh, – you know, it doesn't mean I have all the answers, but you have had this experience, and it can be beneficial to the young guys, how they react. What really intrigues me is how these kids react to wins, to losses especially, um, how they prepare, all the things that make you professional. I I'm not going to make some of these kids are so talented um, just on, on this mid-fairfield travel team. I was so impressed with some of these guys. Um, the skill level that they that they have and that they're honing over the time is much better than, you know, myself at that age, particularly in goaltending. 
but you know how to react, you know how to prepare, and that can really help uh, the young players um, move to the next level. And you're working with them, but also the, the Rangers have their junior Rangers youth sure. camp that yeah. you're working with, and a lot of alumni there, including yep. Adam Graves, Glenn Anderson, Stefan Mateau, uh, uh, Colt Noor as well, part yeah. of this. Uh, that's something that you guys do year to year as well, and yeah. great turnout always. Yeah, the Rangers, they run a great camp, and I, I, I like going, and certainly I love working with the kids. But I love listening to Steph Mateau. I love listening to Adam Graves. These guys were great professionals, great teammates, great friends. I love hearing their perspective on this. You know, I learned things like that. I was at the Messier camp a few years ago and, you know, just hearing him talk about how he would handle a breakout pass. You know, if you see your numbers, you're doing something wrong. You mm -hmm. got to give them a target. Little things that these aren't just things they read. These are things they lived and it got them to the next level and through a, a long and successful career. So it's cool for the kids to go in there. I, I, I grew up in Philadelphia. I'd gone to Bernie Perron's hockey camp and just, you know, you'd, you'd hang on every word he had because he had been there and he had done the things that you're hoping to do. Um, these camps are great. I, I, I like being part of them. The kids are enthusiastic. The play level's pretty damn high and, um, and the instruction's excellent. Yeah. Hey, so it's really cool. Thanks so much for the time. Hey, thanks for having you me. You know, as Sam Fun. said, it lasts a lifetime. It does and indeed. It, and it certainly feels like it has just happened. It's amazing. And you look like you still play, by the way. <laughs> thanks a so very much. bad men's league. <laughs> <laughs> for more great videos from the MSG 150, check out her right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.